Welcome to the Indie Beacon Show, where readers can discover great new indie authors. Find us on all major podcast systems and YouTube. Join Rox Berkey on today's show. Welcome to the Indie Beacon Show. I'm Rox Berkey, um, and I am delighted to be hosting this evening Lucas Kitchens. Welcome, Lucas. Hello. Thank you for having me. I, I'm just delighted. And you know, you are an amazing person. You seem to be very, I don't know, very focused on your writing. It's very interesting. <laughs> so yeah. not only are you a best-selling author on Amazon, you've got over 20 books, and you have lots of different genres, but I'm going to start first with how did you decide to start writing? What was your, what was the push? You know, I tried not to write for a long time because, you know, when I was in school, I was a terrible English student. Absolutely terrible. I, I couldn't figure out where the commas went. What do you do with quotation marks? You know, the technical stuff I was awful at. And so even up into my late twenties, I still felt like I am not a writer, but I realized in the kind of work that I was doing, I was writing, um, but I wasn't, I wasn't letting people see what I, what I wrote. So I would write scripts for videos. I had a media business at the time. I would write scripts for videos and people wanted me to write those scripts, but they were always voiceover. So nobody ever saw my words in print, you know? Mm -hmm. And so over the years, I began to get this sense that, you know, I, I'm a storyteller and people seem to listen when I, when I speak or when I write something and it's recorded. And so I began to think I would, I would love to, uh, to write books. And some of that came out of wanting to make movies. But as you know, movies need a big budget. And the beautiful thing about books is you can build set pieces with a sentence and it's free, you know. And so I began to write. Uh, I started with, um, with sci-fi, really, um, kind of like uh, some urban fantasy and some sci-fi type stuff. And I just fell in love with it. And what I discovered is that you can hire an editor or, you know, if you get uh, published by a traditional publisher, there will be editors attached to a project. And so I realized maybe it's not that big a deal that I'm, a, you know, a terrible English student, you know, maybe it's not that big a deal that I had to be in remedial English classes um, because it can get cleaned up. What matters is storytelling. And uh, it's just a beautiful, um, uh, it's a beautiful opportunity to be able to do that kind of uh, that kind of thing, even though sometimes I still struggle with where to put the comma. Uh, but um, the editors that we work with uh, help me get it all cleaned up. Yep, you're probably not alone in that particular issue. There's lots of comma sprinkling or comma omission in, in <laughs> yeah. many areas. So yeah. you really do have a wide range of genres. You mentioned your sci-fi and urban fantasy, but you also have done children's literature. You've done uh, Christian theology. I mean, is there you know, one area that really has kind of, uh, you know, captured your fancy or that you like returning to? Because you have over 20 books now, so it's like, hmm, okay. Yeah, yeah, I kind of have a, a good sense of what what I enjoy, and the answer to that is is that what I enjoy is bouncing from one thing to another. Um, I, I wind up getting really excited kind of any, any writer understands this, as I'm sure uh, you guys do. Um, I, I, I kind of start following the trail, some, some train of thought. And that train of thought sometimes leads out of the station of the genre I have worked in and leads into another station. And so for me, it's, it's kind of just chasing the muse and trying to figure out, um, you know, w once something's written, it's sort of like, where does this fit in the market? And sometimes it doesn't fit in the market very well at all. And sometimes it, it, it kind of fits squarely in a genre, but I, what I find is I love storytelling. So like in my bio, it, it mentions that I write, uh, cr uh, some Christian theology books, but even those are peppered with stories and, you know, uh, experiences from my life. Um, I'm not a, I'm not an academic writer. I'm a, I'm a storyteller who sometimes steps into these other, these other arenas because what I, what I saw in like the theological realm, there are brilliant people who write theological works, but then those works are pretty intimidating for the average person. And I thought I'd like to kind of fill that space is taking these, these ideas that are difficult and, and intimidating and with some, some story and some humor, trying to bring those down. Sometimes I say it's like uh, trying to create low hanging fruit out of things that are, are sometimes 
sort of difficult. So, but what I keep returning to is, is fiction. I mean, I, it's sort of like I'll, I'll kind of depart from doing fiction for a while, do some, some nonfiction stuff, some memoir, but I just, what I find when I wake up in the morning, a lot of times I'm thinking about some story that um, is completely, uh, you know, inventing the world, inventing the characters. And that's, that to me is it, just super exciting. Well, there you go. World creation is a lot of fun. Yeah. So, yeah. so when you started down your writing path, did you have a specific cheerleader that, you know, helped review your work and, and that kind of thing or? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, as, um, as most do, if they're married or have a significant other, my wife really was the one that encouraged me to do it because she, she knew I was a storyteller and she had read things I had, you know, smaller things I had done. Uh -huh. And my, uh, you know, my, the walls that I had built, she sort of understood that well, those are, those are just hurdles to jump over. You can learn to be a better, you know, um, a better English student or a, a grammarian, so to speak. You can learn those things. Mm -hmm. uh, but some of the things I was doing uh, in the way that I would tell stories wasn't things that just anybody would learn, you know. And so she encouraged me. And I remember when I first, I wrote that first book, the first book I, I ever wrote, full, first full length book that I actually published and uh, independently published, but um, ever wrote was called World Builder, which okay. is interesting based on what we were just talking about. But um, it was kind of like a sci-fi fantasy sort of uh, modern fantasy sort of a, a book. She read it and just that right there told me, wow, she either loves me a lot <laughs> or maybe there's something to it. She read it and she sincerely said, I'd read the sequel. I mean, I liked it. It was, it was really good, you know? Um, and so I was just blown away and I started to pass it out mostly among my family. And my brother came back quoting lines from it. It's like, oh, are you wow. kidding me? You know, I mean, there's no reason he, I mean, he has to tell me it's good because he's my brother, but he was actually, man, I got chills at this point. And he was telling me things about the book. I, I knew it wasn't just a you know, I mean, he, he really, he really did read it and really did like it. And so it was the, it was the family for me at first that really, um, that really gave me that encouragement. And then it, then it began to expand from there, um, way slower than obviously I wanted it to expand, but it's actually been really good for me because I want my craft to improve quicker than the size of my audience increases. Because by the time, I, like every writer is growing their audience at any given time, if I, if I had a huge audience at the, that very first book, I wasn't ready for that. And I don't think that book was ready for, you know, a wide range of readers. I had a lot to learn. Um, right. And so that was, uh, that was kind of where it started for me. So you mentioned, and we've talked, talked so far about you being a storyteller, and that's very important to you. Does that come into play when you do some of your international speaking? And I know you're a pastor as well. So does, I mean, you obviously bring it into that role. Yeah, I mean, I think so. I don't I don't know if your viewers are familiar with, you know, kind of the Christian uh, tradition or at all. But if you look at like what Jesus uh, would actually do, he was a storyteller, you know. And so there's a lot of preachers out there that will they'll teach, but they'll teach in this very technical way. And they won't share they don't share stories. And I just can't get away with that. I feel like that's to me, that's just part of who, who I am, you know, in my faith is, um, communicating through stories. And so, yeah, if I'm, if I'm speaking, if I'm, um, sometimes we'll do uh, pastor's conferences where, you know, I'll go and teach through uh, certain concepts or short, certain, uh, books of the Bible. Uh, but for me, so much of it is still returning to storytelling. Like how do we take concept and this works in business it's it's not just in the church world this works in business this works in uh you know tech anything how can you take a concept and turn it into a story because our brains for whatever bizarre reason they are wired to remember stories better and so if i can if i can teach a concept in uh, you know wrapped in a story then people will get it and they'll remember it better and that's what we want when we teach no matter what the subject is that we're teaching and that's perfect. I mean, I'm right there with you. So at this point, we're going to take a short break and hear from our sponsors and we'll be right back. Please come back. 
Hello, I am the author Denise Bryson. My first book is The Things That Crossed My Mind, Inspirational Poetry with Life Lessons. And then my audio book is Love's Reality. And it is also inspirational poetry with a jazzy flair. And then my new book is The Sex, The Lies, and The Soul Ties. They're really short stories uh, written from a poetic uh, expression. And then I have my first children book series, the Blinky series, which the first book is called Meet the Coins, and it is both in English and Spanish. And then the new book uh, from Coins, the bills. I am the author, Denise Bryson. Lone Star Festival, a Texas size event. Meet authors, artists, and Texas musicians in the city of Seguin on May 29, 2021. Sponsored by Will Seguin, Coffee Shop, Authors Marketing Guild, B4R.Store, and Dear Texas. Produced by Texas Authors Institute of History. Join us if you get your free tickets online at LoneStar.book. Marianne Fairmouth is a career consultant with 30 years experience in the national recruiting world, a multi-award winning author in multi-genres, and a speaker that gives presentations to help you succeed. Her book, Revolutionary Recruiting, made the top 20 global list of recruiting books. Find her on Amazon, your favorite bookstore, or at fairmom.com. Lone Star Festival, where Texas authors, artists, and creatives come together for a Texas-sized event. Join us on May 29, 2021 from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Seguin Coliseum, Seguin, Texas. Free for everyone. Produced by Texas Authors Institute of History. Sponsored by e4r.store, Authors Marketing Guild, and the City of Seguin. More information at lonestar.bookfestival.network. Welcome to the Indie Beacon Show, where readers can discover great new indie authors. Find us on all major podcast systems and YouTube. Join Rox Berkey on today's show. Welcome back to the Indie Beacon Show. I'm Rox Berkey, and I'm, I'm here this evening listening to Lucas Kitchens tell me about his journey. So Lucas, you've been on an amazing journey and you've written a lot of different things. I wanna talk about one of your books because I think it leads right into what you were talking about from a storytelling perspective. And that's a book that I think released last year called Naked Grace. Can you kind of give me a quick summary for our listeners about that story or that book? Sure, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Naked Grace is basically kind of a, you know, a chronicle of a certain theme in my life. So I grew up in the buckle of the Bible Belt, and it seemed to me like there were these basic questions that the Christian faith should find it very easy to answer, right? Those basic questions like, what do we have to do to be saved? Things like that. And what I found was those questions were not as easy to get answers. Actually, you could find answers, but the answers you would get were pretty contradictory. And so, um, and so as, a young, as a young kid even, I began to ask those kind of questions. And that led me on a, I guess, maybe three, almost three decade journey of trying to get clear <laughs> on these very basic tenets, these very basic um, questions of the faith. And so the book, Naked Grace, is not a, it's not a theology book. It's a, it's a story book. It's a memoir, so to speak, but it focuses on this one area of my life and these, you know, these stories. And a lot of them are kind of humorous, some even sort of embarrassing. I mean, I've always been happy being the buffoon as long as somebody's getting entertainment value out of it. And so uh, some of the stories are just kind of silly. They're, they're me chasing after these answers and doing some, sometimes some silly things to, uh, to try to find them. But in the end, um, you know, uh, I, I hope that the book really helps folks that are kind of on that journey. And for, for many, there's many out there who have not begun that journey they're sitting in a in a pew or maybe they're watching online now because of the pandemic they're watching their church online and they're struggling they have these questions um but they don't feel comfortable pursuing like say they're the minister at the church that they're at or something like that and so um so that's what that's what this was about me being that weird guy that would go up after a sermon and say what did you mean by this word? And when you said that thing, what were you talking about there? And, um, and so that's kind of what the book uh, is about, sort of humorous stories that, that connect with that pursuit. So it's a memoir of sorts. 
and yeah. it's, it's fun. So um, you mean, you've got humor in there. So you're not just, um, like you said, it's not a, a theological book where you're going to learn chapter and verse, as yeah. it were. You're really just going to learn some concepts and, and reality. Yeah. So you're very transparent about how life is affecting you and how religion's affecting you. Yeah. Very yeah, cool. you know, I, I like what you said there. It's, it's not chapter and verse. In fact, I don't know that there's any verses even quoted in it. Maybe there's one or two because I'm a pastor. I can hardly help it, right? But it's not that kind of book. It's, it's yeah, it's stories. And, um, and I, I just believe that, and, and maybe, I mean, probably your viewers have noticed this, that when you hear a story, that you can kind of associate with and you can kind of connect with. Um, it's, it's way different than when you hear a, just like a, a dry concept, like here's what you should believe. Duh, 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 duh. That's not the same thing as hearing a story of like, I was pursuing these things and here's what I discovered along the way. And here's, here's the hits I took in this pursuit. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for in Naked Grace. Well, and that's why stories are so fun, right? Yeah. Cause you put emotion in it, you put passion, yeah. And you put things that you learn, that's why they stick with people. So you're, I think you're onto something from a concept perspective. Now, Naked Grace, um, you know, that has a really interesting little trailer with it. And you mentioned earlier that you were a filmmaker as well. Yeah. So how does your filmmaking and this trailer come together? Well, that's, yeah, that's a good question. So I, um, basically the way that my story played out, and actually I, I talk about this in the book, I, um, I did ministry for a number of years as a youth minister, which is a job that you don't really have to have any experience of. You just have to be breathing and being able to stand up right, you know? And so um, I did that job in ministry for a while, really struggled with these kind of topics we're talking about. Um, and then I got pretty jaded and frustrated in this kind of pursuit, you know, and trying to figure these things out. And so um, some of the skills I picked up in, you know, working for churches were media related skills, doing video and doing uh, uh, design and stuff like that. And so when I got out of ministry, um, I began a media company and my, my idea was I want to make movies. I wanted to make narrative like action or sci-fi movies. I had so many ideas that they all took place in space for some reason, you know, just that kind of stuff that would be huge budgets. I mean, I would have needed millions of dollars. And so I made a number of short films and then we made a few feature length films and, um, and they were just not good, you know, just not good. Um, and I'd love to blame it on the budget, but a lot of it at that time was um, that I just skimped on the writing process. I thought, you know, the magic happens in the camera. So you just kind of show up with a bunch of, uh, you know, some actors and, you know, you kind of have a loose idea of what you're doing. And what I didn't realize is this is a writing job. I mean, making movies, you, you got to have solid writing. You, you know, you're uh, creating film material, you got to have solid writing. And so e even through those years, it still was this process of learning to write. And it's a different format, but I was kind of picking up skills in those years that I've now begun to use now that I've kind of returned back to uh, the place where I am where now I'm, I'm writing books and I do some videos and I mean if we need to do some kind of media related thing we can do it now I have kind of a team that I work with now too but um, but now a lot of that's gone into promoting the, the books and the the right. ancillary materials that we make you know um, so I so believe let me ask that, you real quick oh, yeah, before ahead, you get yeah, too ahead. far off of that. So when you write now, do you write like in your head a screenplay first? No, no, not you anymore. Write the story or Yeah, not anymore. So I um you know, I wrote a, a number of screenplays when I was making videos and you know wrote lots of scripts for short films and even commercials because I worked I did a lot of commercial um, video work and production stuff too and so but now the um, my go-to format is is narrative basically narrative fiction even if I'm writing my own story like in right. Naked Grace I'm writing in the style that I would write in in narrative fiction because I'm writing about things that happened 35 years ago. The disclaimer at the beginning of the book is, is you know, these events are uh, true to the extent that I remember them, but the rest I made up because I can't, <laughs> I can't remember all the details. So I write it, I wrote it as if, you know, um, I had this kind of backbone to follow, but a lot of it's just, you know, so that's my go-to format. I don't, 
Um, I don't, I don't write in uh, screenplay anymore. Um, so, so, so because yeah. you're so prolific with your writing, um, and I know you have other projects going on, you want to kind of clue everybody in onto a couple of other projects you might have going on, you know? Yeah, I, I will. And i uh, but, I, but let me start with a caveat. I strongly believe in bottling the magic is kind of what I call it. And what I mean by that is like, uh, if you're halfway through a story and you tell somebody the plot line, you get this amazing catharsis from, uh, from pouring out that story, even though you're not writing it at that moment, you're, you're just, you know, you're telling that story. I've noticed if I do that in detail, if I do it in like a general scope, it's not that big deal. But if I do that in detail, I lose I lose the kind of some of the drive on the story. So, uh, so I'll give you some general things that I'm, I'm working on. I, um, I'm working on a fantasy story that I'm really excited about. And um, I started it kind of thinking it would be a faith-based story. And now I'm trying to figure out how is this a faith-based story? I think I've kind of, I kind of, it gets carried away. You know, it, it, it sort of gets away from me as I write. And I'm like, okay, what was my point with writing this? I just got so excited with these, these different ideas, you know, and I've never written in pure fantasy. I've written in kind of like urban fantasy, but it's all been modern, you know? And so I'm really excited about trying out uh, that, you know, try and try, it's like trying on a new set of clothes, seeing what that, there you go. What that and feels you've like. Before. It's yeah, yeah. like writing in different genres. Let's go ahead and stretch. Let's make the Yeah, yeah, yeah you color outside the lines, don't you, Lucas? I can well, tell. yeah, I, I think maybe uh, without my glasses, I just can't see the lines and I can't <laughs> tell where I'm supposed to be. I, I'm not, I'm not traditionally trained in this, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm experimentally trained. That's the way I think of it is it's just, I'm trying to figure it out. And most of what drives me is what, like when I wake up, what am I passionate about today? And I happen to be able to be passionate about something for long enough to get a book done. But at that, (laughs) when I'm done with it, I'm moving on to the next thing. Um, And so that's just... I, I've, I've lost track of your question. I apologize. No, you asked me something when I, I went to rambling there. Sorry. I, I don't know. No, no, you did just fine. This is a perfect place for us to take another break. And we're going to come back for our final segment. Please come back. Authors Marketing Guild, a membership owned company where authors can learn how to better market and sell their books. Join us at authorsmarketingguild.com. Factor 7, the newest thriller by author J.D. May will keep you turning the pages with mystery, betrayal, lies, and infidelity. Ripped from the headlines, Factor 7 follows two prominent doctors who uncover a clandestine plot to spread a bioweapon with a 98% mortality rate. Journey with them as they experience a world of murder, power, entry, and corruption, where it becomes deadly clear that exposing the truth is just as dangerous as the weapon they seek to expose. Publishing marketing package for authors of $1,500 value, save 40% now. Includes a six-piece marketing kit of 250 bookmarks, 250 business cards, 250 postcards, one table banner, one table runner, and 50 download cards. Plus, book cover design, ebook creation, PDF setups, upload to Ingram Spark, scroll placement, video commercial, and interview on IBS. Plus, much more. Email bourgeoismedia at look.com for details or bourgeoismedia.com. Hi, I'm Mel Greenberg, author of Running With Our Eyes Closed, book one in the Empty Nested series. To the world, Samantha has the perfect life. Three wonderful children, a loving husband, so she thought, and a life split between Dallas and Italy. When her youngest leaves for college, it all comes crashing down, forcing Samantha to re-examine everything. Over seven days in one of the most romantic countries in the world, Samantha faces the past she thought she'd overcome and begins to redefine her role as a woman, a wife, and a mother. What would you do if you had to put your life on hold to care for a loved one? Well, during COVID, almost all of us have been doing just that. I'm Charlotte Canyon, award-winning author, actress, and speaker. And my book, you have to laugh to keep from crying, shows you how you can revive, thrive, and survive with four golden rules. You have to love one another. You have to respect one another. You have to have patience with one another. And most of all, you've got to forgive one another. I'm Charlotte Canyon, and I approve this message. Welcome to the Indie Beacon Show, where readers can discover great new indie authors. 
Find us on all major podcast systems and YouTube. Join Rox Berkey on today's show. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Show. And I'm here this evening for, I don't know, a great conversation with Lucas Kitchen. I am so delighted we've had a chance to talk. But I want to kind of share with our listeners uh, where they can find you because you're obviously somebody would be nice to be able to meet and talk about books and where can people find you? Yeah, well, so I have a number of different places I hang out online. So I'm not going to tell you how to get to my house uh, physically, but I'll tell you how to get to me online. First is social media, as probably everybody. Um, most of my social media accounts, I can be found with just my name, Lucas Kitchen. And so you can search me there. I've got Facebook pages, Twitter pages, and the, you know, the other stuff. And so, um, so that's a good way. I I'm pretty busy, so I don't always check that. But if, if somebody wants to talk, I would love to connect. So uh, I love to connect with readers and non-readers. And I like to take non-readers and see if I can turn them into readers. You know, the whole thing. So uh, social media. But as far as getting to, like, say, my books, best, best way to get specifically to my books, if you're an Amazon customer, is to go to lucaskitchen.com. Because that is, I've just, what I've done is I've taken lucaskitchen.com and just that's my Amazon author page because that let's just get right to the point right so um, so that's probably the easiest way but then if you want to get to the sort of the broader scope of like all of the projects I'm doing because I'm not just writing books right. I, that's my main thing but but we also do videos and we do I even have a series that will probably be made into a book eventually called Bedtime Lessons for Kids it's it's uh, it's called yeah. Dragon Dragon Tales and it's just sort of like fun kid dragon stories that parents can tell their uh, to tell their kids at bedtime and it comes with kind of a spiritual lesson. All of that kind of extra stuff you can uh-huh. find at a website called freegrace.in. stands for Free Grace International, which is the, the, uh, the group or the team that, um, that we've kind of put together. So that's freegrace.in. So, that's pretty cool. Do you ever do um, like book festivals or signings or any of that kind of thing where people can you know, actually meet you or is, is, yeah, right? I, I mean, I've I'm done some during COVID, but you know, yeah, I've done some conferences. We'll do conferences every while, every once in a while. Um, book signings. I haven't. Um, and I'll tell you, I, I, I know that a lot of traditional publishers probably still do that. We are really focused on connecting with people online. Um, mm-hmm. And so I'm not against book signings, but my audience is kind of an I would say thin in so many places because it's not a mm-hmm. it's not a absolutely massive audience, you know. And so if I showed up in any average city and did a book signing, nobody. I mean, I would just assume nobody would know who I am. So, um, so we've got we've got like these pockets of people. Like when when I look at the map of where we sell sell books, we've got these pockets in certain places, and I have no idea. Who, who is in wherever that is, Tampa Bay or, or whatever, but we'll, we sold a bunch of books there for some reason, you know, so, um, so I wouldn't know where to do a book signing or where to, you know, where to even do that, where we would actually have some, some audience. So occasionally conferences and stuff like that, uh, always open to new opportunities, but boy, pandemic world has really shut a lot of that down. So. Oh, um, no, it has no uh, doubt about it. Now, I know that you also have your books in not just ebook format, right? Yeah. So we uh, we when we produce a book, generally we're also going to do uh, we'll do an ebook. We'll do a paperback. We're now doing hardcover just recently, um, mm-hmm. and we've done some hardcover before, but we're getting kind of back into it. It was a lot of trouble last time we did it, but uh, but now and, and also we do audiobook, which is one of my favorite formats of all. Not surprised. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just I love audiobook. I mean, some of my my greatest moments in my you know life alone, like when I was single, was listening to audiobooks. I'll admit, and this sound this probably seems ridiculous, but I'll admit one of the best audiobook experiences for me was actually the Twilight series of all of all. Oh my things. gosh, really? Oh, I loved, I loved Twilight. That's a whole nother conversation. My wife and I, that was one of the the first things we connected with. I wasn't I was not the target market for Twilight, trust me. But for some reason, that book specifically, and it might be because I never read anything else in that genre. I didn't didn't know anything about 
any of that. But right. that one, that one got its hooks in me. And I, <laughs> I went through the audio book on that. And just, I mean, I remember times where I was like, screaming, Bella, how could you, you know, or whatever it was. So, uh, and I know that's not like high fiction. It's just for whatever reason, that one caught me. And um, so anyway, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I digress, but uh, love audiobooks. So we do audiobooks uh, as well. And um, we even, for some of our books, we even offer a, a free downloadable copy from our website, freegrace.in on some of our okay. older books. That, that is perfect. So, you know, I would love to continue this conversation for like hours, but we don't have <laughs> time. We've, we've exceeded our time. So Lucas Kitchen, thank you so much for spending time with me this evening. I do hope we get another chance to talk. I would love that. Thank you for watching or listening to The Indie Beacon Show, produced by Beyond Bourgeois for the Authors Marketing International LLC, copyright 2021. It's over by Beyond Bourgeois. If you would like to be a sponsor of the show, please email us at authorsmarketing at outlook.com. If you would like to be on the show, please complete the form found on our website at indiebeacon.com. You may also watch previous years' shows on the website. Music is Solid of Words, created for Indie Beacon.